611 is a really good rule. Um, so 611 subsection C talks about, I'm sorry, subsection B talks about the scope of cross-examination and subsection C talks about leading questions. 611B is really simple. The scope of cross-examination, it says cross-examination other than the initial cross-examination should be limited to the subject of the direct examination immediately preceding that. What that means is initial direct has any scope, bless you, any scope that you open up. The problem with mock trial is that this rule is, in a, the way that this, this rule is written incorrectly for purposes of actual trial. In actual trial, you can only cross on what came up on the direct, from the beginning all the way through that witness's testimony. Here, they don't limit your cross. They, they don't limit the scope of your, of your initial cross, nor your initial direct. Anything's fair game. The scope rule only comes into play beginning with redirect examination. So the scope of your redirect examination is limited to only what was discussed in the initial cross examination. It's, very, it's a very useful rule because nine out of 10 times, the first question out of, actually, I'm sorry, 611C, I'll, I'll do them both together and I'll explain to you. 611C says that you can only ask leading questions on cross-examination. That means on direct, it's all open-ended questions. You can't lead the witness to an answer. You have to ask them open-ended questions. They have to give you the answer. 611B and C are very useful rules, beginning right when someone gets up to do a redirect examination. Right when they get up to redirect, you can, you can bank on one of two things. The first, second, or third question out of their mouth is going to be either or both leading and beyond the scope. You, especially if you, if you have a really solid cross-examination and you really cut up that witness, you sit down, the first thing that they want to ask is, now, Mr. So-and-so spoke to you about this, but isn't it true this? Boom. Objection. Leading. Cut them off right there. And if they keep doing it, Your Honor, my apologies, objection leading. Rule 611, subsection C specifically says that you can't lead the witness on redirect examination. And use that kind of tone of voice. Kind of firm, but mm, be apologetic that you're, inter that you're interrupting the witness. You get more bees with honey than vinegar. Vinegar, thank you. Um, okay, so that's what 611A, B, and C do. Any questions on Rule 611? Right. 612. Writings used to refresh memory. You guys know what? If you've been watching the Casey Anthony case, you've heard this term a lot. Refreshing someone's recollection. There's a difference between impeaching someone with their sworn statement and refreshing someone's recollection. And there's a process to it. Since we're dealing with 612, we're going to deal with refreshing recollection first. When you refresh someone's recollection, the first thing that needs to happen before you can do anything is they have to say, I don't really know. You have, they have to say in open court, I'm not sure, or I don't really know. The next thing that you need to say is, with looking at a copy of your deposition, or looking at a copy of this letter that you've written, or looking at a copy of a map, would that help to refresh your recollection? If they say no, you're done. They may do it, just to screw with you guys, in your scenario. But my point is, is that you have to offer, ask them the offer, you have to ask them if, it, if, if looking at something would refresh their recollection, and then, you, and, then you, and then they have to say yes. At that point, you can go walk, you can walk back to the table, grab the document, let the record reflect that you're showing opposing counsel, what has been previously marked as whatever for identification purposes only, walk up to the witness, uh, directing your attention to paragraph whatever, line whatever, please read silently and look up when you're done. They'll look up and then you say, has your memory been refreshed? You have to say these words. If you don't say these words, it looks awful. It looks, it looks like it's an impeachment and it's not. And if you get a judge that's a real stickler for the rules, he's gonna, he, he or she is going to uh, sustain an improper impeachment objection because it looks like you're, you're impeaching someone, but you're not. The difference between refreshing someone's recollection and impeaching them is how you ask your questions. <clears throat> when you, 
When you impeach someone, you have to go through the following process. Number one, isn't it true that the ball was blue? The answer has to be something to the effect of, no, it is not. Or, no, it is not, the ball was red. Your next question, number two, is, is it your testimony today that the ball was red? The point is, is that in their deposition, they said that the ball was blue. You have to lock them in to saying that, is it your testimony today that the ball is red? You lock them into that. That's what's called a direct contradiction. It's the only way that you can ever impeach a witness. You cannot impeach a witness on, it might have been blue. Well, that's because, it's the same thing as saying today, well, it might have been red. It could have been red, it might have been blue. It's the same thing. There's no contradiction. It has to be a direct contradiction. Then you walk back to your counsel table, you grab the sworn statement, let the record reflect I'm showing opposing counsel what has been previously, what, what uh, the witness's sworn statement, uh, directing the court's attention to page and line number. May I approach the witness? Uh, is it, uh, and then now you say, directing your attention to page whatever, line whatever, please read silently as I read aloud. But it helps if you have two copies of it, one for them and one for you. You testify, question, whatever. You, don't, you guys don't have questions. So you would read the pertinent portion. And you would say, the ball was red. Or the ball was blue. I forgot where I am in the analogy. But my point is, you read the contradictory statement. And then the last thing you ask is, is it still your testimony that the ball was red? The reason why you ask that last question is because you haven't completed the impeachment. They haven't admitted to misspeaking. At the, unless you lock them into either changing their answer or staying by what they said and saying something different in court, you haven't actually locked them into it. It's a very specific process. You have to ask the questions the right way, but that's the way it goes. Now, back to Rule 612, which says that you can refresh recollection with anything in your packet. Big deal. Um, 613 talks about prior statements of witnesses. Oh, I'm sorry, does anyone have any question on 612? And do you use a re refreshing, like when you said they said the ball might have been blue, would that be a time that you would refresh memory? If you, it was a key fact and you yes. needed them to agree to it. That, that's not, a, that's, not that's, might have, but a, a direct, yeah. That's a really that's a really good question. Thank you for bringing that up. If you, if you want to impeach someone's credibility, but you know it's not a direct contradiction, then you would refresh their recollection. The point is... The, the, the problem is, is that, remember, they have to commit to not remembering clearly enough and that looking at something would refresh their memory. If they know, that if, I mean, in, in your purposes, these people, these people playing these witnesses usually know the affidavits inside and out word for word. Right. Um, so if, you know, you're asking someone, they're going to be like, no, I know what I said. I, I know I said it might have been blue, and I'm, that's what I'm telling you today. It just blew up in your face. So, you know, feel these people out if they look like they might be a crappy witness or not as prepared or if they come from one of those great many schools that we compete against who shall remain nameless that aren't as talented and don't work as hard as we do, then, you know, you might want to, that might be a route that you want to go, but generally not. Um, all right, 613, prior statements of witnesses. Uh, we have a time check. What time is it? 8-11. You guys want to take a break? Dang it. This is kind of a doozy. Yeah. I would